Well, hello from my car today. Same as yesterday, I've spent two whole days out and about, and I'm about ready to go home. <laughs> yesterday, I spent most of the day at the Apple store up in the mall, and I was trying to get a new phone, as you know, and I can't show you my phone, it's all cracked up and it has been, but it's fully paid for, the, finished the payments last year. And I need a new phone. And Moosey told me that the button on his eight plus doesn't work anymore, but it does. That he wanted a new phone. <clears throat> and uh, as you know, I've been having trouble with my upside down videos. And I talked to three or four tech, tech guys from the Genius Bar at the Apple store. And they couldn't figure out what was happening other than perhaps my iMovie app, which is my editing app, was probably too full. And we looked on settings and yes, it, my, my system is really crowded with videos. And you can imagine after four years of making a couple of videos a week, I have a lot of clips and pictures and videos. So just now, <laughs> And by the way, I'm not drinking Del Taco coffee. Today, I'm having a Mickey D's Diet Coke. I am so thirsty that I had to stop. Well, I went to, as you know, I'm trying to make Christmas stockings. And I did go to the um, fabric stores yesterday on my way home. And by the way, it was pouring rain all day. Pouring, pouring down rain. And there's only really two big fabric stores around unless you go downtown LA. And that would be Hobby Lobby and Joann's. And I went in both looking for velvet. As you know, I have to make my, my next thing now that I've passed my driver's written test. My next thing on my list was checking off sewing four more stockings for new grandbabies and younger grandbabies. So I make the red velvets and they're big. They're um, probably in the end when I get the fur and everything else on, they're wide and they're good for stuffing and putting goodies in. And I've been making these since my kids were probably eight or nine, little kids. And <clears throat> we have 56 in our family now and the grandkids are having babies. And I've probably made, I don't know, 50 something stockings or at least 40 something. And I put little pieces of the girls' wedding dresses on. I put mementos on them on the front and some lace. Boys, I do differently with fun things. Maybe make a little pocket. And I put the fur on the top, make the green velvet for the boys. However, I am having trouble finding green velvet. And I've been to a couple of stores yesterday. Right now I'm sitting outside Hobby Lobby and I did settle for, I'm gonna show you. I was looking for a velvet green like I've been making before. Now I can't tell whether you're in the light or not, but that's a beautiful velvet. Now these are the real velvet, um, velvet rayon velvet stockings. What I came out with, <laughs> and I'm going to show you, couldn't find the right color, but I found this. Is this green or blue? Now, I'm going to still keep looking because a lot of people will say it's a teal color, which probably has blue in it. And I have two boy stockings to make. And probably two or th maybe three because we just found out that Molly's having a B-O-Y. I don't know whether she's published it yet or not. So we're so excited. She has the two sweet little girls. But... I, my bobbin had popped out. You don't want to hear this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. My bobbin popped out of my sewing machine. And when that happens, I always have a devil of a time trying to get it back in again. The needle evidently strikes it a couple times when it goes that, gives that thud. So I have this favorite guy. I've got a, a lot of guys everywhere that help me. And he's a sewing and vacuum repair guy. And there's not too many people around anymore doing this on sewing machines. And I always go down to him. He shows me how to put the bobbin back in, but I never get it right. So I went there this morning. This time I videotaped it and he showed me the trick. So hopefully I'll remember. So it's all set to go. I'll Bob. take off these two screws first and that's going to allow you to take out your bobbin case. So there's a tool that comes with the machine. It's this yep. over here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was looking for a screwdriver this morning.
this is something that you know I look at in the book. I have the big book and everything. Mm -hmm. But I've had machines ever since I was seven. Well, my was my mother's machine. She taught me how to sew, and I sewed for years everything in and the world. Lift up your plate. Yeah. Okay, put it to the side. You can see it's all jammed in there, so yep. you're gonna want to take it out. Take it out. And then reposition it. But I think I did buy one from you yeah, one you time might too. Yeah, another one. But we'll, we'll, let me just show you how you go put it back. In. Okay. okay. So then you're gonna put it in like that. And it's well, where, sit like what that. points where? What's the what's the trick? Which okay. which um? So it's got to sit this way, with where when you move it with your finger, it's gonna do that. So now you have it on video how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to sit in there. Yeah. Uh, the way to put it in, you're gonna wanna these two okay, like, little arrows right oh, here. Oh, that's what I wanna know. Where do those go? Yeah, that's the front, forward. And so down. they go forward, and then forward it just pops down. right in. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's probably been my problem. I didn't know that those two yeah, things they go, go there. Forward. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And it's in? That's it. You're in. And, and when you do this... No, no. Oh, uh, no, see? Well, see, I'll go ahead and pause it, and then we'll... Do what? If you can pause it. Now. I have my sh machine in the back of the car ready to take home and start this project. I'm going to do the red stockings first, and maybe on Amazon I can find a good hunter green velvet. I'll, I'm still going to try, but at least I have this. So now I'm going to AT&T because yesterday I was not able to get the phones, two phones, to try and get my upside down video fixed. I think I'm going to have to um, get a hard drive and start taking stuff off. That's the only reason they thought. It's not my fault. They didn't say that they had heard about a bug in the iMovie app. It's my editing app and I use it all the time. And when I get ready to put it on YouTube, it's all right side up. Something happens in the process of exportation. And that's when I get it upside down. I'm also a very apologetic about the music in the last video. I am so sorry. Yes, it was terrible. My husband wears hearing aids and he said, oh, the music. Something was wrong with that too. I, I don't know why I've made 430 videos, gals and guys. So go back on my homepage in the meantime and look at all these ones, four years worth of videos. But, but in one month I've had three upside down videos. So that tells you something is wrong somewhere in probably the software system. I learned yesterday there are two systems in this uh, telephone, iPad, computer system. Software and hardware. Hardware is mechanical problem. Software are the systems that go into it. So I think we have a software problem somewhere, but let me take a sip. So thirsty. <coughs> so now I'm on my way to AT&T to see if they can do a better deal for some phones. I also have that brand new computer that I got a couple years ago, hardly ever used. And I'm gonna see if I can't trade that in for the phones and then it, hate to start all over with payments and everything, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I think I'm gonna get the new phone and hopefully my videos will be better. I, I'm not ready at 86 years old to learn newer things. I think I know enough right now to make a decent video. I know how to do graphics. I know how to edit. I know how to do a couple of little techie things. I know how to do, um, um, I know how to do thumbnails and, and various other things. I don't think I have to. I, I know you all love my videos, most of you. <laughs> And I'm hoping that perhaps I can just sail along for the rest of my video life with what I'm doing with maybe just a little bit better camera. So that's where I'm headed now. And AT&T is nearby and I'll let you know how I do there. See you later. Well, hello, my friends. Now, I have to explain where I am. I am spending several hours at AT&T. I'm finally getting both my phones, but guess what? I have to give my phones to them in about 15 minutes because they have to transfer everything to the new phone. 
Now, David has also helped me figure out perhaps possibly what went wrong with those upside vi down videos. I, kn I know some of you thought they were funny and that I did it on purpose, but no way, I didn't do that. So, no, he's not a real person. These are photos and advertising in the store. I know this is very unorthodox and I'm sorry to do this, but I won't have my phone for a couple of hours to be able to finish this video. And uh, this is the only way I can figure out how to get a video to you tomorrow morning. Okay, here's my new pal, David. How's it going? <laughs> David there? has told me about all these <laughs> nice discounts. He's saving us money. Uh, there you go. <laughs> what do you have to say about everything? Uh, the, you're very nice, too. Oh, you're very thanks. nice, too. If you guys are ever in the area, stop on by. Thanks, David. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, let's see what we have. I am so hungry. <laughs> So I had to call Moosey to get some information about his veteran ID card and various other things when I was filling out all the information. And I remembered that I had his phone and his phone was with me and there was no way to get in touch with him. So I called Colleen. She was sitting down with Moosey outside. So I was able to talk to Moosey with Colleen through her and she had to run in the house and get the the um, the vet the veterans ID card and various other things for to be able to get the military discount etc. So it worked out fine. <gasps> Look at this. Now usually I'm showing you Del Taco stuff, but this Southwestern they also call it a Santa Fe chicken sandwich, and it has that. Oh, sorry about that. It has that um, green chili on it and cheese and it's absolutely delicious. And I'm gonna take my first bite. Decadent, yes. Good for a diabetic, maybe, maybe not. But I like Carl's Jr. because it's, it's almost like fresh foods too. Mm, so good. And I love these. I dip these in ranch dressing. So I'll have my lunch. In about 25 minutes, I'll be able to go back to AT&T and my phone should be all transferred and I can bring it home and maybe do some, some more recording for you. You know, <clears throat> when I get my new phone and um, I think Moosey probably knows how to work it. It's, his phone is probably good too, except for some of the new things about videoing and various things like that. But I think we'll be fine. But I do, <clears throat> after this week is over, ho hopefully next week, but I, I am getting busy with my sewing my stockings too. <clears throat> over the weekend, Micah and Colleen are taking me out to dinner. Well, Moosey too, but this is a part of my birthday gift. We're going out to dinner and probably going out for sushi. We're all big sushi lovers. <clears throat> good for you, good fish. And... Um, we don't know where we'll go, but that should be nice Saturday night. And hopefully maybe Ryan will be home from college. Brendan won't, but Shannon will be coming with us too. It's always fun. And on Thanksgiving, I think we're going to be going down to Matt's for Thanksgiving. And um, <clears throat> a lot of the kids are, are hosting their own children. You know, when your family gets so big, we were having Thanksgiving dinners um, actually right before COVID at Colleen's every year. And we probably had 30, 35 at a big long table she set up that went from the dining room to the living room. And it was wonderful. We'd go around the table and everyone would say something they're thankful for, including the children. And some of the most beautiful things that everyone said, especially the children were, were lovely. And I miss those days, but you know, you have to go along with the times too. And um, we we do have drop-ins if we eat at one house and some of the other kids will drop in to say hi or, or whatever. So, so that's our Thanksgiving and the weekend plan. And then hopefully next week, well, for a couple of days before Thanksgiving, I'll be able to start sewing. I did send away for another piece of green velvet on Amazon, and I hope it's that right hunter green color, but I'll show you that when it comes. 
I also am going to do a video <clears throat> on Christmas gifts if you're interested in certain Christmas gifts that are good safety tips around the house. And one of those is going to be those emergency lanterns. And the other one is something for putting out fires. Now, I will have to admit, in your kitchen, they say that most fires in the home happen. Had to take a bite of that zucchini dipped in ranch. <clears throat> most fires happen in the home, in the kitchen. And I've had two of them within the past two years. One was my microphone, my microwave popped and some flames popped out. <clears throat> some flames popped out of it. And that was scary. I uh, immediately unplugged it and, um, and got a new one. But that went out right away. But that was a scary one, an electrical one. And then I did, unfortunately, leave a frying pan I was cooking bacon, I guess, so it did have some grease in it, and, and I left it on low on the stove, came into the kitchen. I saw some smoke drifting out. It was a scary one, and when I saw it, there were flames coming up out of the pan, pretty high, and of course, my mother always told me salt, so I got a big thing of salt that's right on a shelf, started pouring that out. It didn't go out. It was too big. I forget what I finally did. I think I was able to put something over it or something. I know you don't do water. It was on top of the stove, so it was a grease fire. I don't know whether I went to grab it. I had a big mitt on and put it into the, the stove was right next to the sink. But we have quite a few uh, firefighters in our family and they have suggested certain things. I do have one of those red extinguishers, but I've seen people just fumble around when you're all upset like that, trying to figure out how to put it on. It doesn't always put a fire out, but I have something that will work with any fire and it's coming tomorrow and I'm going to show you that too. So that will be in a video, maybe next week too. We'll see. So I do have some some good things for you. This is really a, a vlog of the the daily trials and tribulations of Nanny this week. But I have accomplished something that's been on our minds for a long time. Now I just have to get some new glasses so they won't fall off my nose. Well, I'm home from my very busy day. I'm in my pajamas. By the way, my new velour pajamas from Walmart, which I absolutely love and have them in black and in a buffalo check. This one is trimmed with little pink piping. It's nice. Uh, trousers and a top. And I'm exhausted. I have spent three full days, one full day up at Apple at the mall, sitting on a, a wooden block for four or five hours trying to discuss problems with my upside down videos lately and um, signing up for new phones. Moosey's and my phones were just a wreck. Mine had cracks and splits all over it and Moosey had an old fashioned one. So I was trying to find out what I could get on trade-ins and everything. Left there, didn't do it. And of course, in this video, you will see my problems with trying to find more velvet for the Christmas stockings that I'm making for new babies and children and new spouses and things for the grandkids. Red for the girls, velvet and green velvet for the boys. Having trouble getting the right velvet, but did a lot of that. I got my sewing machine fixed. And today, this morning, Moosey said, I can't get my phone to work. The button doesn't work. So would you please go out and find another phone and just come home with the phone for me? So off I went at 1030 this morning and I did get back about almost three. And <laughs> I have two new phones. This is one of them. This is my new phone. It seems awfully bright. Maybe I have to adjust a few things, but I did pick up the i15 Pro Max that the camera is supposed to be very nice. I still have a lot to learn. I I can learn customization where I can blur the back and and bring the front into more focus, all sorts of fun things. But that will be for another day. Today, I just wanna get this video finished for you 
and tell you a few things. All it's going to be this time is what's going on in our life, just daily things. And it hasn't been much except a bunch of errands. But I do have a couple of funny stories for you. Sort of funny. So last night, Moosey and I were sleeping and I was watching The Golden Bachelor. <laughs> if you still watching that, we're down to two women now. We have to see what he chooses. He's 72 and I think both of the women are in their 60s. So we'll see, but Moosey doesn't watch that stuff. He was doing, watching, he was reading his Kindle. So I fell asleep right near the end. Don't know what happened, but I'll watch next week. And I think I, I was off and on watching forensic files and some other things, fell asleep, woke up, fell asleep. And I was semi awake around one o'clock in the morning when all of a sudden the TV went off the heater went off, the lights outside from anywhere was total blackness. Has that ever happened to you? Not even a light coming in a window. It was as, as if I were blind and couldn't see at all. It was the weirdest feeling. Now, last Christmas, and I think the Christmas before, I did give you some good gift ideas. And one of them was those emergency lanterns that you just pull this thing up and it lights up. You don't fumble for buttons and things. I will do it again this year because I think it's a wonderful gift for grandkids and, and children and friends to just keep one by the bed. Everybody has blackouts. I do wanna show you these lights. This is what it looks like. The name looks backwards. I don't know how to turn that around. I'll have uh, David do that when I go back. Vont. V-O-N-T is the name of this. And when you buy them on Amazon.com, you can get them in groups of two in a box or four in a box, and they're quite reasonable. Um, but let me show you this. It's gonna be bright. Just pull this up with one finger and look at the light that you get with it. It lights up almost the whole room. And uh, I haven't had to replace any batteries in any of these. They're good to put next to your bed. Just no fumbling around for buttons or anything. These things collapse, these little handles go down. Pull them up. They're so easy to pull up, straight up. No turning or twisting or what. So I will put this in the description box, amazon.com, and the name is Vont, V-O-N-T. Gotta turn this around. I oh, never had it backwards before either. New camera, newfangled things. So I, I did, my bedside table was sort of littered with stuff and I sort of sat down very quickly because I kind of lost my equilibrium. And as I sat down, I, I tried to feel around my dressing table till I found the lantern. Sure enough, I found it. Just pulled these two wires up and I had light. It's amazing and you must get some of these, my friends. I will put all the information on the description box below under the little words more. So go to the, those words more in the description. Now, then I got up. Of course, Moosey slept through all this. And I thought, woo, I wonder how long this is going to be on. And I walked around, I looked outside to see if any lights were down below in the, the um, neighborhood down below us. We're sort of up on a hill and there weren't any lights on there. There weren't any lights up at Colleen's and I thought, okay, this might be a while. So I remember last week talking about seeing down on the, the main road, seeing probably seven or eight trucks in a, in a whole line working on telephone poles, whether the electrical is going bad, whether it was spectrum or what, I don't know, but the Wi-Fi, everything went out. So I sort of wandered around. I went back, sat in bed. I, I just decided maybe I better light a few candles. And as I was doing that, the lights went on. So thank God it wasn't too long in the night and um, all was well. Whatever happened, I don't know. But those emergency lights do come in handy. So the next thing that happened, I did eventually go back to sleep. And for some reason, well, I know why I was awakened at about quarter to seven, just when daylight was starting. I think I have told you that 
for the last couple of years, we've had raccoons here. I always want to call them giraffes. Is that what I want to call them? <laughs> Can no, kangaroos. I always tell most we have kangaroos on the roof, but I really mean raccoons. And the raccoons do come. I can't leave cat food out. And I know it's raccoons because they have those three long fingers. And I always see the, the fingers out on the patio on the glass top table looking around for something. We've tried to have people come and live catch them and take them away. That hasn't worked. But I hear them on the roof and I know their sounds. Occasionally, Shamu would go up on the roof, but not much. You wouldn't hear it much. But the past month or so, it's been heaviness on the roof, heavy steps on the roof. Almost sounds like a human. And we have those clay tiles. And I thought, aha, I'm going to find out who this is once and for all. So I got up, I got my, my well, it's the mop right next to the, the door. I keep a mop there only because I'm in the kitchen with it all the time. And I, I, I opened the door. I didn't see Shamu around because I'm always worrying about Shamu. And I went outside, but I couldn't see up on the roof. It's a cottage, so it's low. And I backed up probably about 20 or 30 feet. And as I looked up on the slanted part of the roof that faces the hills in the front, guess what I saw running back up the roof and up to the apex and then over the roof. And then there's a big hillside in the back that goes that's quite close to the back of the house. I saw a coyote. Now, it's not that I didn't know we had them, but I didn't think they were roaming all over my roof, although I had an inkling that something large was up there. A couple of days ago, Micah and Colleen came down and said, bad news, I think we have a family of, of coyotes around. I've seen a couple of them. Harley got into it one night out by the pool, so they are, we're gated here, and they're sort of in a big area up on the hillside and everything. There is a fence to the other neighbor, but whether they got through the fence or what, I don't know. Micah thinks maybe there are maybe two or three of them that somehow have built a little home up on the hillside in the top. I always see Shamu looking up to the hill, up to the hill all the time. But for 12 years, she has avoided all things. And uh, I bring her in for several hours at night, then she wants to go out again. So what to do? I don't know. I looked up, he looked at me, and he ran because I made a noise like a bear. I went, and he heard that noise and left. Of course, Moosey didn't wake up. but So that's my stories of what happened this morning. And then I took off and had a, a, a very pleasant couple of hours with a very lovely guy, David, who helped me out. I took a picture of David down at AT&T helping me, and he found me military discounts because Moosey is a vet and some other discounts on my total bill with insurance and all the rest of it. And he was very helpful. And I love it when people tell you about discounts that other people won't tell you about. So that's kind of it. Now, although my face looks very bright in the camera, actually I'm facing a big window, a natural light that faces out to the hillside. However, I told you when, before the rain started, the day before yesterday, Micah put up these dark brown tarps in front of the cottage, all across the front, to keep the rain from hitting the, the cottage itself and going down the hill over the wall. So it's like a blackout curtain ahead of me. And I just noticed when I transferred this video to my iPad to ready to go to iMovie, it seemed a lot darker and not quite as clear. So I hope it's not my brand new camera because this is supposed to be sharp, sharp, but I'll get it right. So I apologize. And I won't put any music in this video, I promise. <laughs> That was part of the problem. I wasn't able to adjust music in the last video. I know it was bad and I apologize. I think I said, I'm sorry to half the people or the other people. I just hope you understand. I am still sipping my cola. Now I enjoyed my lunch very much while I was waiting to have my camera, um, all the, um, everything on the camera switched over to the new camera. So I'm not hungry tonight and it's time to, uh, put something in the oven for Moosey.
a nice easy supper. I think I told you that we did buy an extra freezer for our shed for all those evenings when I just don't feel like cooking. And I filled it with some great Trader Joe's stuff that I can put in. And one of the things that Moose is having tonight is a shepherd's pie. And he's had it before and he loves it. And that, that might be it enough for him because they're quite large and very delicious. And then I think tonight will be an uneventful night. I hope so. And that I will sleep well. The next video I think I might do in front of our fireplace in the bedroom. And I'll hopefully have some skin news for you. I'm giving myself a couple more days with something new that Colleen highly recommends. And everybody on YouTube and TikTok recommends it too. I'm not telling yet. Maybe you know by now. But I think that might be the next video. So I'm going to go make supper now. Actually just put something in the oven. <laughs> no cooking tonight. And I will see you all soon. Thank you so much for your support and your loving birthday messages and messages that you're enjoying the videos. So appreciate it. Bye for now. Love you. See you soon. And God bless us all.